Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Uh, we're going to get back into doing the um, routines for the SHA 256 hash calculator today. A um, little bit of housekeeping before I do. Um, I've started a Patreon for this uh, series, so if you'd like to contribute, that's where it is right there, patreon.com slash my name. Um, there's no obligation. All the videos and code and everything are going to continue to be free. It's just a way to contribute to um, help out with the series if you like. Um, so you can check that out there. Um, Alright, so to the code. Uh, the first thing I need to do is fix a mistake I made last time. Um, all these routines that I was writing, I wasn't putting a return at the end. And I think that was mainly because the zone, the, the brackets at the end for the zone were making me think of Perl or C code where your bracket is the is, sort of, is the return. So they were they were working because I was always putting the, the newest one first, um, but that uh, that should fix that. It would have been a, it would have been a problem sooner or later. It just hadn't been a problem yet. Okay, so. Let's check the one other file too. Okay, that's the include file. We've got 32-bit libraries. All right, so those all have returns. So it was just in that one, just in the main file that I was missing them. All right, so we want to do a couple more functions. We want to do F3 and F4, which now if we look down here, both of these work on variable variables. These don't work on a particular variable every time and so we have to make these more flexible and so before we finished up last time I said we're gonna need routines that can copy from main memory into zero page from zero page back to main memory and from main memory location to another one um, because what F3 and F4 work on if we come down here somewhere there they are. They work on a chunk of the message uh, schedule and that's going to move each time this loop down here runs and so we've got to be able to say okay take this this four byte chunk out of the message schedule and do function f4 on it and to do that we're going to want to copy it to zero page and so we have to have a flexible routine to do those copies. So if we go to our 32-bit lib here, we have an fcopy zz routine for copying within zero page. And if we look at just our, our documentation file, um, I don't know, where is our documentation file? There it is. Okay. With fcopy zz, we pass the zero page address to the source in y, the zero page address to the destination a, the number of bytes in x. We can't do that with a main memory location because you need two bytes for the source and two bytes for the destination if they're both in main memory. But any main memory address, you need two bytes to, to specify it. So we're not going to have enough registers to, to pass everything in registers. So we're going to have to set up a couple of zero page locations to hold addresses for these things. Um, and so let's do that. Where am I at here? Okay. So let's let's call them um, copy source. We'll put that at fifty. And when I say main memory, I just mean anywhere that's not zero page, basically. And copy destination, then can be fifty two. need two bytes for each of these. They'll be a low they'll be low byte, high byte, just like normal. Alright, so let's say let's do MM first. This will copy a series of bytes from 
one main memory location to another. All right. And so before we call this, we need to put the we need to put the source address in copy source and put the destination address in copy destination and we're going to want to pass the number of bytes in y because because of the way the addressing is going to work we're going to be using indirect indexed addressing here and so it just makes sense to use y um, it would be nice if we could have a consistent um, way of passing all these things and all these routines but it's really not possible because indexing in zero page is pretty much always done with X at least with all the routines we've been doing so far we have to use X for that indexing for this kind of addressing in indirect indexed out in main memory we have to use Y that's just the only the only possibility and so we can't really we can't say well let's just always put the number of bytes in X for these routines we could, but I mean, we could pass the number of bytes in X, but then we'd have to transfer X to A and then to Y to get it where it's going to need to be. So let's just pass it in Y. We'll have our, you know, we'll have our documentation here so we know what to do to call this routine. So now to write F copy MM. Um, let's just copy this. It's going to be quite a bit different from F copy ZZ, but we can at least start with the, the bones of it here. This one's going to be pretty straightforward. We want to we want to copy. You know, actually, maybe we should pass the number of bytes in X. I'll show you why in a second here. Let's go ahead and do that. Pass the number of bytes in X. No. Sorry, I'm I'm going back and forth on this, but um. Yeah, let's let's do that just for just kind of for what it's going to show here. Um, okay. If the number of bytes is an X, we can use that as our counter, but Y has to be our index. Has to be our indexing. Um, and so what we can do then is go ahead and load Y with zero, then load A from copy source comma y store it into copy destination comma y increment y decrement x branch if not equal back up to here which will be here and then we're done so what this is going to do y is going to go up from 0 to 1 less than x and X is going to count down from X, whatever's passed in X, and then drop out when it gets to zero. So, think here. Yeah, that should work. We're going to test it, but that should work. Um, okay. So, to call this, we have to put the source address in copy source, put the destination address in copy destination, put the number of bytes in X, and then call F copy MM to do the copy. All right, so let's do that with a test. Um, let's see, I don't remember what all we had going on here. I guess it doesn't matter. We'll just come down here below it. And let's copy from, um, let's see. 
Let's copy from 1300. That's where the program is. So we know there will be some bytes there that we can recognize. And let's store that into um, copy source plus one. That's the high byte. Load A with zero. Store that. The copy source. Okay, so 1300 will be um, where we'll copy from. And then let's copy, store that in copy and destination also. And then and then we'll make 1600 the destination. And we'll load X with 10, let's say, 10 bytes. Or let's, let's keep things hexadecimal for now. And jump to subroutine. Um, what did we call it? F copy? Is that right? Yeah, F copy MM. Okay. So we want to co we want to copy ten bytes from thirteen hundred to sixteen hundred, and that's going to be our code to do that. All right. Uh, all right. So our first ten bytes at thirteen hundred will be that, and I guess I should show the whole section because we only want the first ten. We want to make sure it doesn't go too far, so it should copy the one C but not the 8.5. So let's check. At 1600, we just have zeros right now, so it'll be easy to tell when if it works. 1300. Okay. Nothing there. Hmm. So what did not work? Oops. What did not work? Well, let's check copy source and copy destination. There's our 1300. And 1300, what did I do? Goof something up. Oh, yeah. I did say indirect index, didn't I? But then I didn't do it. We, we don't want to store at that location. We want to use that as our pointer indexed by Y into main memory at the locations. Okay. Yeah, that was a that was a mistake. All right, let's check that again. All right, still zeroed out. There we go. Copied ten bytes and only ten bytes. So that's what we wanted. All right. So that one was pretty easy, actually. The F copy MM was pretty easy. It's going to be trickier to go from main memory to zero page or vice versa. So let's do it. Let's go um, let's go RAM to zero page first. So this time we'll have the source address and copy source, but we'll go back to having the destination in Y, I suppose. Because um, we're going to need to do it like, well, yeah, we're going to need to do it kind of like we did it here. Um, yeah. Pass the number of bytes in, or let's see, what did I say? Pass the number of bytes in X, but pass the zero page address of the destination in this case. 
in uh, in Y. Well, it doesn't matter. Like I said, we've had to do we've had to arrange them in different ways, different times, depending on the situation. So we just have to do what we have to do. Destination address in zero page is in let's say Y. We'll fix it if we need to and pass the number of bytes in X. We could we could write all these to pass four bytes but there are I think there are going to be times when we want to copy more than four or less than four whatever and by allowing us to specify the number of bytes we can also make this more generally useful for other programs besides this SHA program and this thing this thing is almost entirely going to be working with four byte words and so we could limit it to four bytes but um, I'd like to have this this library of 32-bit routines be more useful than that. All right, let's say let's say it like that for now, and then we'll we'll swap y and x if we need to or whatever. Um, okay, well we can't kill that right away, so we're going to be copying from source just like this, which means y is going to have to be our index. So if the destination address is coming in in Y, we've got to get rid of it pretty quick. Um, let's see. But then storing into zero page. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be interesting because we have to index with Y out in main memory, but we have to index with X in zero page. So those are going to both be tied up as indexes, even though they're going to have the same value. We can't, you, we can't, we have to be using them both for those two situations. There's no way to get around that. Um, well, actually, that's something to check. I know that was true with the rotate and shift registers or commands but I don't know if that's true with store so let's find out real quick um, I should know where these things are found by now there we go page 170 or so I need to remember that for next time Yeah, even store, let's blow it up here, even store A, you can't index in zero page except with X. So, it's just not an option otherwise. So, our load A has to be indexed on Y and our store A has to be indexed on X, and they're, they're going to have to have the same value as they count up or otherwise you know things wouldn't match up so we're gonna need to copy the number of bytes into some other counter that we can check that's really gonna be the only well let me think actually X won't be It's, it's going to have to be self-modifying code one way or another. Um, let's see, do we have a count variable somewhere that just counts? No, we don't yet, so let's call that count. So let's store x, that's our number of bytes, into count. All right, so now we've got a counter that we can use. Um, oh, 
Okay, we need to swap these two. Destination address to zero pages needs to be X. The number of bytes in Y. We'll store Y in the counter because, and then we can load Y with zero so that it's ready to be an index here. Because X, X is not going to start at zero because we're doing this. We're indexing on X with X as the zero page address. So if X comes in at like five, six, then we're, st then we're storing it. We're taking from here, from copy source indexed on zero and storing at five, six, and then copy source indexed on one, we'll store it, we'll, we'll increment X. All right, so I think I'm starting to get this figured out. Um, so after we do that, we increment Y, increment X, decrement count, and then branch if not equal back up here. It bothers me to have three counters basically, but two of them are being used as indexes, which means I'd like for them to count upwards. Um, which means we either have to we either have to decrement the counter or we have to compare one of them. We have we would have to compare y to the counter every time or we can just decrement the counter and I think that's a cheaper operation. Um, yeah, I think that's what we want. So let's save that. Let's copy this to our documentation file. All right, so F copy MZ source address and copy source that makes sense destination x number of bytes and y all right go back to our main program <coughs> so let's copy from copy source but this time we're going to copy to um, we're not doing copy destination this time so <coughs> Number, but let's see. Number of bytes is in Y, and destination. Let's put it at B zero. I think that's a fairly empty spot of a zero page. Um, or actually, let's just let's see. Let's look at our. Um, let's look here. Let's copy them to 20 for now. This is just for testing, but I don't I don't want to copy them somewhere in zero page where I might clobber something that matters and crash the thing right now. Um, so we're going to copy 10 bytes from 1300 to 20 in zero page by changing that to MZ. All right. So again, at 1300, We've got 10 bytes ending with 851C, starting with A9, ending with 851C. Or let's, well, we better make sure that's still going to be the case. Yes, okay, from A9 to 1C, and at 20, mostly a lot of zeros. So let's uh, run it then. All right, it works. That copied 10 bytes from 1300 to uh, 20 in zero page. All right. So now it should be fairly simple to um, let's see. Did I copy that? Uh, too many files going. Okay, I did. Copied that into our documentation. All right, now it should be fairly simple to swap that around and make a zero page domain memory. I'm not even certain we need this, but I'm gonna add, I'm gonna include it for completeness's sake. Um, I don't know if this particular program will need it, but from zero page to main RAM. Once again, source address and copy source, or no, sorry, source address in zero page is in X because we're just we're swapping things around. Destination address in copy dust. Okay. Pr 
probably can keep everything else the same here. So we're going to store the count again. But then we will load from we'll load a from zero zero comma x store a into copy source and then y increment x da 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 da. I think that should be all the same then. So zm zm. here plug it in all right so let's go back to the main program so this time we want to copy from let's take those 10 bytes from 20 and put them in destination 2000 let's say Oop, problem Desk source. Oh, I wrote that wrong. Copy desk. That's right. Okay. So at two thousand, we have yeah, just empty space. So, um, so we should be getting those ten bytes from twenty, which are still there. Now, they might get clobbered, some of them, when we run this program. We'll see what happens. But anyway, that 10 bytes should match up with the 10 bytes at 2,000 after we run this. So let's load the program. All right. What do we have at 22F now? Yep, same stuff. We didn't clobber it. And at 2,000, nothing. Okay, that's a problem. What did we do wrong? Copy dist, load x with 20, and load y with 10. Oh, I didn't change this. I'm still doing the main to, zero, main to zero page copy. I had to change it to the other one. Okay. What am I doing? There we go. Okay. There's our starting bytes. This time we did clobber the first few, but that's okay. And they're still not at 2,000. Destination address and copy dust. Oh. Another mistake. I didn't change that to copy dust. I was still copying to copy source, which was probably doing bad things. Um, but it was doing them after the program was already breaking, so. Alright. One more try. have a good feeling this time. There's our source bytes and there's our destination bytes. Okay, so they match up there. Okay, so now we can copy from each possible location to each possible location. And now we can come back to our main program and think about what needs to happen next. So that was all about being able to get um, values from a particular location into position to do this stuff. Um, if we look at, like, let's come back to that. F3 and F4, just like F1 and F2, as far as how, they, how they're laid out, they're three rotating routines or in this case a shifting routine exclusive or together it's just that instead of copying the value from a particular memory location in zero page they've got to copy the value from um, a moving location in main memory all right so if we 
we look at F2, let's say, it does, you know, it, it does several things. It copies E to, to temp 1, rotates it, copies E again to temp 2, rotates it, does an exclusive OR on temp 1 and temp 2, copies E to temp 2 again, rotates it, does another exclusive OR, and then copies temp 1, which is our finished product, off to a, a location to save it. Um, so this is going to look, F3 is going to look just the same, except that the numbers are going to be different. This last rotate is going to be different. It's going to be a shift instead of a rotate. The main difference is going to be the copies. They're going to it's going to have to copy from main memory to, to zero page instead of one zero page location to another. And it's not necessarily going to know where it is in main memory until it's being called. Um, the reason for that being this business down here, this these get used when it prepares the message schedule. The message schedule is a chunk of memory 256 bytes long. They, they talk about it in terms of words. Um, so 64 4 byte words, 256 bytes, however you want to think of it. It's going to go through that in 4 byte chunks and so it's going to be moving along through that 4 bytes at a time. And so like right here where it says um, WWT minus 2, that means the word, the four byte word that is four, that is two words before the one we're currently pointing at. So eight bytes back from this one. Um, so basically, what this word, what this boils down to, is these these functions are not going to be able to know everything. They're going to have to have that value the address of that thing that needs to be worked on is going to have to be passed in to them. Um, now it can't be passed in copy source because they're going to need, it's going to need to use the address copy source to um, actually Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, maybe we can just assume that the routine that calls F4 and F3 will set up copy source with the pointer to where the chunk is that need that they need to work on, and then call them. That might be the best way to do this. Um, let's copy F2. Change it to F3. Let's go get the definition for this. Okay. I'm going to say for now, we may change this later, but I'm going to say for now that it acts on the value x, which has already been pointed to by copy source. So the routine that calls this, that calls F3, will need to go ahead and point copy source to the right place. That's the way I'm going to figure this for now, at least. So, that means we're not going to be calling ZZ here. We're going to be calling F copy MZ. And let's look at our thing here. The source address is already going to be in copy source. The destination is going to be in X, and the number of bytes is going to be in Y. So, how does that work out here? Well, before we were putting the number of bytes in X. So, we've got to switch that. We've got to take this out. 
let's see. What did I just say? Um, here, let's copy this over there too. Yeah. All right. So the destination temp one has got to be an X, not an A. Basically, we're just we're swapping around some registers here. So the number of bytes in Y, that's four. The destination address in X, that's temp one. And then we're going to copy. And we're going to assume copy source is already pointing to the right place. Um, okay. Then we rotate it. That all that all should be the same. But then we get down here again. We've got to change this to X, this to Y for our destination and our number of bytes. Okay. Um, let's see, copy from copy source to temp one. That's what we're doing right there. I really like where I put these comments last time. So let's fix them. Okay, then this one is going to be copy from copy source to temp1 again, or to temp2. realized it makes more sense to put these comments after the the jump that actually does it rather than earlier on so I'm just moving them to, so it's a little a little clearer I hope all right copy MZ these are all going to become copy MZs here copy MZ except this last one because this this actually does copy to another zero page location now do we have an f3 location we don't so let's stick I don't know if we'll need this but let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and have an f3 location um, move those things up all right keep it clear okay so that's going to copy to f3 res f3 result all right so for each copy mz we want the destination in x and the number of bytes in y so here's another one destination x number of bytes in y here's the last one destination in x number of bytes in y Okay. All right, now we got to get the rotates right. So this one we want to rotate right seven times. Then here we want to rotate right 18 times, which I'm surprised I didn't flip that around because Rotating right 18 times would be the same thing as rotating left 14 times. So let's rotate it left 14 times. This one's seven. And then this one down here will not be a rotate at all. It will be SHR three times. So three times. SHR. Okay. All right. Okay, let me think about this a bit. Make sure this all seems right. The, the exclusive ORs don't change. 
all the operations on temp1 and temp2 don't change. We're just changing where the value comes from each time we copy it that's coming from main memory and the actual shifts that happen to it. All right. So let's go back to our main program, or I guess we already are in our main program. Let's come back up here. Um, okay, we, we've got 20 pointing to our copy destination. We're, we're putting 2,000 in our copy destination. We need to put some values at 2,000. Let's just, um, we've already got A there. Since this is just for testing, I'm just going to go ahead and make it clear what we're doing. Load A with 1. Okay. So we're just going to put a 1 at 2000. And then we're going to call, let's see, we put copy dest. We've already loaded copy dest with 2000. And we put a value in there, and then we're going to call F3 on it. Is that all I have to do? Yeah, because it's going to load X and Y on its own. Okay. Well, let's see what that does. Got it assembled. Okay. So when we run this, well, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, if we look at 2000, there's our 1 that we that we stored there. Now, where's F3 res? F3 res is at 6.8. Okay. Um... So that's what we ended up with there. And that seems unlikely, but <laughs> um, I'm not absolutely certain that section of zero page is un, un, uh, unused. But uh, let's see. Well, let's, let's walk through it here. We're putting a 1 there. And then we want to rotate it to the right 7 times. So let's just walk through this. We've got a whole bunch of zeros followed by a 1. Okay. That's a layer. Well, that's what we got just to begin with at 2000. We're going to copy that to temp1 and then do our thing on it, copy it again, do our thing on it, copy it again. So rotating it seven times to the right should give us um, 0200000. Rotating it 18 times to the right. Let's see, 16 times to come around to there, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0. And then shifting it three times to the right should just result in 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, because that doesn't rotate around, it just shifts it off the end. So what we should be seeing at F3 result should be 0, 2, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, which is not at all what we're seeing. All right. So let's do this. Um, I don't know if any of this stuff up here is affecting it, but it really shouldn't. We're not doing anything with... I mean, anything we do up here should get clobbered by what we do down here anyway, if, it, if it's affecting anything. So let's do that. Then let's... Let's also store A into um, 
six eight six nine six a six b just so we can tell that it's not coming from somewhere else okay. okay so Okay, so six, six, eight still has that stuff. O five, three, four, three B E nine. It didn't change, even though we stored something there. So, um, it is getting written by something apparently. Um, that's working. We're storing the the zero 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 one thing there I guess let's see let's see what happens if we move that up here let's just make sure that that's working yeah okay that's working so we're getting to this point in the code. It's not like it's breaking out during FMAG or anything like that. It is getting down here. So... so where are those values coming from? All right. Well, we might have to walk through it, but let's just walk... We might, we, I might have to walk through it with the brake monitor, but uh, let's just look at it here for a second. Because um, we are storing zeros there. Unless, like I say, they are getting replaced by something in the operating system. Something that, because like the monitor and that will use zero page locations sometimes. Um, down to F3. Let's see, what is temp one? Temp one is three eight. Let's see what's at three eight. Okay, same thing. So the copy part is working. It's something's going wrong before that. Okay. And what is copy source at this point? That's another thing to check. Because where you were expecting copy source to be pointing to 2000. And copy source is at 50. So what's at 50? Ah, 1300. I think I made a dumb mistake. Yeah, I'm still... I'm storing 2000 in copy destination when I'm we're back to wanting to be copying from the hey, pay more attention to the names of things um, okay so we want to copy from 2000 at copy source to the temp variables do the thing and store the result into f3 result which is at 68 Okay, I need to, um, it's probably, it looks better, but I need to take this back down to here. Simplify things, let's get it back to one bit. Okay, I believe that's what we were looking for, 0200, is that right?
get. 02004000. Okay. That is right. Okay, so now we can do F4. Um, I guess that's all right. I guess it doesn't care whether the brackets match up. So F4, let's get the definition for it. Sometimes the editor tries to be just a little too helpful. Okay, axon value, axon da, 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 da. Should do all the same stuff this time, except this time we're working with different different rotation values. And so rotating right 17 should be the same thing as rotating left 15. Won't be a huge savings, but let's do that. Um, So if this, that would be 15, rotate left, and then 19 to the right would be the same thing as 13 to the left. And then um, 10 to the right. fine. And then we're going to copy that at the end to F4. F4 res. Okay, I think that's all that needs to be changed there. It's almost identical except for just the numbers of things, the number of times to do things. So let's walk through what this one should do. Now, if we start out with our one again, your one, it should um, actually you know what let's because of the shift right thing let's start out with with it turned around with the one on the other end okay. we know the rotating works we just okay so rotate it right 17 times that's going to turn it into zero 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 uh, 0080. Rotate it right 19 times. 20, I believe. And I'm intentionally sticking with right because that way I'll be checking to make sure that my left's, that my conversion to rotating left was correct. And then shift right 10 times. 0000. zero, zero, zero. 4000. Zero, zero. believe that should be correct. And then exclusive oaring all that, we should get 0040A0. Zero, 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 uh, zero. 8 and 2 exclusive or together should give you should give you A. Should give you 10. Okay. So back to the top. We're going to do the same thing, except we're going to call, we're going to swap the one around to the other end of things. We, uh, we want to move this up so that we're zeroing out F4 result while we're testing. Okay, we're still going to copy from 2000, which we're going to load with these values. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Okay, so what do we got at 2000? There's our 1000. And what do we have at 6C? We're looking for 40A0, I believe. Yep, and that's what we got. All right. So we now have our F3 and F4 routines ready 
to do their operation but when we use them down here we'll just have to remember or, you know check the documentation and see that this will have to set up the address each time in copy source so that they can get this value from the right place all right we're almost at an hour here so I think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna tackle anything new right now I'm just gonna kinda go through this and think about what needs to come next um, we're gonna need some actual data to work on pretty soon so we're probably gonna have to we, we've been working inside out starting with the smallest stuff and building out from there but I think we're gonna have to work outside in a little bit soon and um, so that we have some, so we have something to work with. This prepare the message schedule. Um, well, we could we could do some of these routines down here, but the point is, you know, this is going to get easier to do at some point if we have a chunk of stuff to work with. But like here, to do the T two routine, I don't know. We probably won't probably won't have a separate. T2 routine the way we have the with these functions up here because this is only this only needs to happen in this one place within this loop so we'll see what happens when we get to that but I think the next thing we're going to need to do is kind of step out and work from the outside in where we figure out okay we need to get a file load a file in figure out how to pad it and then start working on our message schedule stuff um, and work to work inwards from the outside towards um, towards our small functions and gradually get to where everything ties together from the from loading the file to running all the small stuff um, so I'm gonna need to do that um, the other thing is um, I think what we'll do as far as display goes I want to display the results as this goes on on the 80 column screen that way we can run it at 2 megahertz we can run it at the full speed of the Commodore um, of the 128 and uh, turn off the 40 column screen and display our results as we go on the 80 column screen and so that's where we'll use the, the 80 column routines that I wrote the other day in the last I don't know one or two videos ago um, we use those routines to display some things on the screen as it processes like we'll stick the message schedule on one chunk of the screen, we'll show the hash values on another and so we can see as they calculate we'll, we'll show we'll display what what block of the message schedule it's currently working on all that kind of thing um, as it goes along so got a few things to do next time there um, and we'll just keep plugging away at it we've got a lot of the we've got a lot of the lower level stuff done and as we start working on this higher level stuff that's gonna you know save us a lot of trouble a lot of this is just gonna be writing loops that will pull those things together and and add values um, that's something else we're gonna have to have next time is um, let's see need a routine to add to 32-bit values. That's one we haven't done yet. We've done all the Boolean stuff, anding and oring and exclusive oring and all that, but we haven't done one that just adds to. Um, so we'll need that. Um, we've done that. Um, plan the 80 column display, how we want to display this stuff on the screen as it's as it functions. Um, And I guess that's it. We'll just keep plugging away at those things and uh, eventually get this finished. So, hope this time has been interesting, and uh, thank you for watching.